Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to discuss about pharyngeal apparatus. So this pharyngeal apparatus consists of ectodermal cleft, endodermal pouch and pharyngeal arch. In fish, it involved, this apparatus involved in the formation of gills is responsible for exchange of gases. Whereas in case of humans, this apparatus involved in the formation of head and neck. In human embryo, up to fourth week, the neck will not be formed. During time of fifth week of embryo, the neck is formed by elongation of region between stomatodium and developing heart. The stomatodium is nothing but it is a future oral cavity. So this elongation is mainly due to mesodermal thickening. This mesodermal thickening in the form of arches will be seen around the cranial part of foregut or we can say primitive pharynx. So this mesodermal thickening will be seen around the primitive pharynx that's why it is called as pharyngeal arches. If you see the extension of mesodermal thickening. So on the back side that is on the dorsal aspect we can see there is a presence of hind brain vesicle. And imagine this is the midline. This is on the ventral aspect. So this mesodermal thickening it is present in the form of arches. So it dorsally it extends from iron brain vesicle and passes forwards along the side of the pharynx and passes ventrally and medially reach the midline and will be fused with the corresponding arches. So like this, we having six pharyngeal arches will be present around the primitive pharynx. Out of six arches, the fifth arch will be disappeared. So totally we having five arches will be the first, second, third, fourth and sixth arch will be present. So this mesoderm, it is coming from where? So this mesoderm is coming from paroxial mesoderm and lateral plate of mesoderm. And this mesoderm also invaded by neural crescents. This neural crescents invade the mesenchyme and also is responsible for formation of cartilage, bone and connective tissue of head and neck. So we have a, this are the pharyngeal arches. When you talk about the arches, just I am showing the red dot, this is called as pharyngeal arches. Externally it is covered by ectoderm. This ectoderm dips into groove and forming the ectodermal cleft. On the internal aspect, this endoderm dips into groove and extend outwards towards the ectodermal cleft. This is called as endodermal pouch. And this is on the external aspect, we can see this is ectodermal cleft. Now we will see the extension of pharyngeal arches. So this pharyngeal arches extend dorsally from hindbrain vesicle and passes forwards along the lateral side of primitive pharynx. Once it reaches the midline, it will be fused with corresponding arches. So this is the midline, it will be fused with opposite arches. So totally we having six arches will be there, among that fifth arch will be disappear. So we having first, second, third, fourth and sixth arch will be present. So this pharyngeal arches externally it is covered with ectoderm. So this ectoderm dips into a groove and continues with the similar arches. This is called as ectodermal cleft. On the internal aspect, this endoderm dips into a groove and continues with the similar arches. This groove imaginate towards the ectodermal cleft. Now this is called as endodermal pouch. Now we will see the mesoderm. The mesodermal thickening is nothing but it is the pharyngeal arches. So this mesoderm is coming from paroxyl mesoderm and also lateral plate mesoderm. And this mesoderm also invaded by neural crest cells. This cell is responsible for formation of cartilage and connective tissue of head and neck. Now we will see in this session, now we are going to discuss about only pharyngeal arches derivatives.
in this session we are going to discuss about pharyngeal arches derivatives so this is the ectoderm this is the endoderm and inside this is the mesoderm so this mesoderm is nothing but this is cells or pluripotent cells this cells going to give rise to four important derivatives number 1 artery number 2 cartilage number 3 muscle number 4 nerves so each arch consists of four derivatives now let's see the first pharyngeal arch derivatives so this first pharyngeal arch derivatives is otherwise called as mandibular arch so what is the nerve of mandibular arch it is a mandibular nerve in human embryo the first pharyngeal arch consists of double innervation so we have a mandibular nerve and one more nerve is there there is a cord or tympanic nerve so next we we'll go for cartilage the first arch cartilage is called as meckel's cartilage this meckel's cartilage consists of dorsal end and ventral end so in this diagram you can see this is the ventral aspect this is dotted line what i am showing this is a first pharyngeal arch so it consists of ventral end this is the dorsal end so dorsal end of cartilage it gives rise to malleolus incus and spine of sphenoid so these are the three important structures is arises from the dorsal end of meckel's cartilage whereas ventral end of meckel cartilage is surrounded by mesenchyme is undergo membranous ossification and give rise to mandible maxilla zygomatic bone palatine bone and part of temporal bone so this is the bone which is arises from the ventral end of the meckel's cartilage so now we can see the part of cartilage between dorsal end and ventral end this cartilage is disappear but the perichondrium that is nothing but it is a covering of cartilage this perichondrium will be remain in the form of fibrous sheet it give rise to two important ligament this ligament is called as anterior ligament of malleolus and spine of that is sphenoid mandibular ligament which extend from spine of spina to the lingual of the mandible so this perichondrium or this fibrous sheet give rise to anterior ligament and sphenoid mandibular ligament so this is the cartilage next we'll go for muscles for what are the muscles which is arises from the first arch cartilage number 1 will be the muscles of mastication you know the four muscles are there in the muscles of mastication number 1 will be the middle pterygoid lateral pterygoid masseter and temporalis muscles in the mandibular nerve from the posterior division one more nerve is there that is called as inferior alveolar nerve this inferior alveolar nerve is going to give rise to one branch that branch is called as nerve to mylohyoid this nerve to mylohyoid supplies anterior belly of digastric muscle and mylohyoid muscle and one more muscle supply comes under the first pharyngeal arch that is be tensor tympanic muscle and tensor belly palatine muscle so this are the muscle which is arises from the first pharyngeal arch next we'll go for artery maxillary artery is arises from the first pharyngeal arch so this are the derivatives of first pharyngeal arch next we'll go for second pharyngeal arch derivatives so second pharyngeal arch is called as hyoid arch it is called as hyoid arch the nerve of second arch is the facial nerve if you see the cartilage the name of cartilage which is from the second arch derivatives is called as richard cartilage this richard cartilage also consists of dorsal end and ventral end 
This dorsal end gave rise to styloid process and stapes. Whereas the ventral end gave rise to lesser cornu of hyoid bone and upper part of body of hyoid bone. So the part of cartilage will be disappeared between dorsal and ventral end. Some perichondrium will be remained. This perichondrium or fibrous sheath is going to give rise to one important ligament. That ligament is called a styrohyoid ligament. Next, we will see about muscles. So, what are the muscles which is arises from second arch? So, this is the facial nerve. So, automatically all the facial muscle is derived from second pharyngeal arch. And one more muscle that is stapedius muscle which is arises from second arch. One more muscle, there will be a posterior belly of diagastric and stylohyoid muscle. So, these are the muscle which derive from second pharyngeal arch. Next, we will go for artery. Stepidial artery is arises from second pharyngeal arch. Next, we will go for third pharyngeal arch derivatives. So, in the third pharyngeal arch, there is no specific name. So, the nerve which is arises from the third pharyngeal arch will be the glossopharyngeal nerve. Next, we will go for cartilage. Cartilage it consists of ventral end and dorsal end. In the third arch, what happened? The dorsal end will be disappear. The ventral end gave rise to greater corner of hyoid bone and lower part of body of hyoid bone. So, this is the two important derivatives which is arises from the ventral end of the second pharyngeal arch. Next, muscles. If you talk about muscle, there is a only one muscle which is arises from the third pharyngeal arch that is a stylopharyngeus muscles. If you talk about artery, common carotid artery and internal carotid artery arises from the third pharyngeal arch. Next, we will go for fourth arch derivatives. If you talk about the nerve of fourth arch is the superior laryngeal branch of vagus nerve. Next, we will go for cartilage. The fourth arch cartilage fused with sixth arch cartilage to form laryngeal cartilage. So, the laryngeal cartilage is derived from fourth and sixth arch derivatives. So, what are the laryngeal cartilage? We are having thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, arytenoid cartilage, corniculate and uniform. So, these are the cartilages which is arises from the fourth arch derivatives. Next, we will go for muscle. The only extrinsic muscle, sorry, only the muscle, cricothyroid muscle. This is the only muscle ex lies externally. This is the muscle of larynx and next muscles of soft palate except tensor vale palatine muscle and next muscles of pharynx. So this are the muscle which is arises from the fourth arch. Next we will go for artery. On the right side it gives rise to subclavian artery. On the left side it gives rise to arch of iota. So this are the derivatives of fourth pharyngeal arch. Uh, next we will go for sixth pharyngeal arch. As we know the fifth will be disappear. So, next we will go for sixth pharyngeal arch derivatives. The nerve of sixth arch is the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So, in the cartilage, the sixth arch cartilage is fused with fourth arch cartilage to form laryngeal cartilage. We already mentioned. 
Next, we'll go for muscles. So, all the intrinsic muscles of larynx is derived from the sixth arch except cricothyroid. This cricothyroid is arises from fourth arch. Next, we'll go for artery. On the right side, it gives rise to pulmonary artery. On the left side, it gives rise to ductus arteriosus. So, these are the derivatives of pharyngeal arches.